What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got a 2006 LBZ Duramax in the shop. Uh, we're gonna be doing an EGR delete on it. This process is gonna be very similar for your LLY Duramax and your LMM Duramax. So this one video, if you watch it, you should be able to figure it out for those other two uh, engines there. If you have an LML, I'll link a different video down in the description because that's gonna be a different process. But uh, yeah, if you find the video useful, please like it, please subscribe. And if you've got questions, ask in the comments or look me up on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel and shoot me a message. Anyways, guys, let's get at her. So just a quick disclaimer before we get into this video, uh, EGR deletes, DPF deletes, all that stuff, that's for off-road use only. So, you know, if you're building a race truck, stuff like that, that's what it's for. Uh, this isn't for public roads, so just keep that in mind before you delete your truck. Another thing, in order to do this job, you're gonna have to program the truck with something that will shut off the check engine light because you can't just unplug this uh, EGR valve and without tuning the truck. So I definitely recommend you gotta program your truck and also put an aftermarket exhaust on if you're doing this EGR delete. So here's the truck, the coveted LBZ. Check out these fuel forged wheels. Those are nice. 22 by 12s, right on. So like I said, this process is going to be very similar if you have an LLY or an LMM Duramax. It's almost identical if you have an LMM. If you have an LLY, this pipe's just kind of going, kind of go down there. But uh, the EGR cooler and everything, it's basically the same. So this video should help you out regardless of what Duramax you have. So here's the kit I'm using. I don't even know what brand this is to be honest. This is the first one I've used. I grabbed it from another local shop just because my supplier was out of the kinds I usually use. So here's what comes in the kit. It's a blocker plate right here. I'm not actually gonna be using this blocker plate, but if you are, I will show you how that is used. Uh, then there's these guys here. They go underneath on this intake horn. Now, in a perfect world, like I like to get the kits that actually come with a whole new intake horn without any of these holes for the EGR valve on it, but uh, they're out of stock. So this is what we're using on this truck. Like I said, I'm doing, uh, I'm gonna actually modify the up pipe. So I gotta take the up pipe out, which means I gotta take the factory down pipe out. So I got an aftermarket Flow Pro part number uh, 10100. Uh, this is just gonna be much better airflow than the factory down pipe. So we're gonna start by removing the EGR cooler. And if you're just using blocker plates, then this will be the, the way you're gonna do it. Once we have the EGR cooler out, I'll show you where you put your blocker plates and then you're basically done. Uh, but once we get the EGR cooler out, we're gonna remove the down pipe and the up pipe and we're just gonna get new stuff in there. So let's get at her. So first thing, I'm gonna get rid of this air intake pipe. Okay, got it out. Uh, disconnect the negatives on both of your batteries. We should have done that first, but it doesn't matter. Just get it done now. Okay, now if I remember correctly, we want to take this pipe out first. So I'm going to disconnect the electrical off of it. This electrical up here is actually bolted down with some torque screws. So just get that all loose and kind of just get every all the wiring loose off of it first. And then we'll uh, start actually unbolting it. Okay, wiring's loose. And I actually just got this whole harness and moved it over to the side. I unplugged my, I think it's your coolant level there. There's one on your AC line back there. Um, but yeah, this is still kind of tight and I don't know if we're actually gonna be able to get this out. So I think we're gonna take this one out now. So there's this sensor here. I would probably disconnect and get out of the way. This is your PCV piping. There's, it goes to each valve cover. There's a 10 mil bolt. And then there's a V-band clamp that actually holds this horn onto the front of the turbo. So we're gonna disconnect all that. I'm probably gonna disconnect this uh, boost pipe here and just move it off to the side so that I can grab this bolt down here from this on this PCV pipe. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try to take this piece out first. Okay, I kind of pulled this guy off first. There's two 10 mils. Uh, this one on the driver's side is not fun to get at at all. I moved this out of the way. They're still electrical. They really don't make these Duramaxes user friendly and it really pisses me off, but whatever. Now this is loose. Should be able to kind of wiggle it out. Just like that, we'll get these out of here. Okay, but now this is gonna be much easier. So we can fold this all of the way. Yeah, there's two nuts there and another nut there and a bolt on the back side. Uh, a nut and a bolt down there. We're gonna have to pop this uh, kind of metal retaining lock out 
and I think there's a bolt right there too. Okay, so I popped this guy out. I got all my bolts and nuts out, and now you should just be able to lift it out like that. Look at all this gunk right at the EGR valve. So this is coming out of the EGR valve. Look, that's disgusting. I'm gonna definitely be cleaning that out, but this stuff's so bad for your engine. Okay, so now we're gonna grab a pail and we're gonna start draining the coolant. We don't need to drain all the coolant, but just if you drain a few liters out, then hopefully we don't leak a bunch when we take the EGR cooler out. Now, for whatever reason, GM got rid of a coolant drain on their rad, which is just absolutely stupid. So we're gonna pop this fender out and there's a coolant line that goes to the rad and we're gonna have to pop that out and that's how we'll drain the coolant. So just uh, there's some of these little tabs that you pop out and pry these out a couple bolts and just kind of fold this inner fender well down. Okay, so here's the line I'm talking about. There's uh, just kind of pop this metal lock out again and then just uh, wiggle this hose back, put a pail underneath and uh, drain some coolant. There we go, just like that, let her drain. All right, the coolant is drained. I like to just snap it back uh, shut when I'm done with it. So now we can get at uh, that EGR cooler. Okay, to make for a faster removal, this coolant hose here that goes to the EGR cooler at the back, I just cut it with an uh, X-Acto knife. And then same with right up here, you see where this hose goes in there. It's really hard to get these, get it out with these hoses intact. So just cut them because we're going to be running a new coolant line kind of through there anyways. So just cut these two hoses and then uh, go at the bolts. So there's a couple bolts here. Uh, this one has a little tab. Uh, it's like a bracket for a, a coolant line. So I like to bend that bracket up after to get it out of the way. Uh, some bolts there and then uh, a bolt at the top there and then there's some that go in from the back They're gonna be the hardest ones. So just get on there uh, Use some pry bars and uh, and some wrenches and uh, try to break them loose The top bolt back here. I like to get a, a Little short stubby 12 mil and then I put a pry bar in underneath it and I pry it up And then uh, once you pry it up then it'll get loose like this and you should be able just to get it off and the other one you can just actually fit a full-size wrench in there and lift it up okay i got it loose but see what i'm talking about this uh, little coolant line tab we got to kind of bend it up a little bit just so that we can lift this egr cooler out of there okay now it's really loose but sometimes you have to go back in there and where the egr cooler meets that exhaust up pipe you got to kind of get a pry bar in there and spread it apart just because the studs kind of get stuck in there so that's what i'm going to do now all right, and here is the EGR cooler. This one actually came out pretty good. Sometimes these uh, nuts on the back here give you some pain, but uh, this, one, this one wasn't too bad at all. So if you're just doing the blocker plate delete, then all you would do is you'd obviously reuse your old gasket, and then uh, you would put this guy in right there. Uh, I think you used some new bolts or whatever for it, but yeah, you would just put that blocker plate on. And then you'd grab these two plates and you'd put them on uh, the bottom of the intake horn where that EGR valve went to. And uh, you'd run this new coolant line. You'd basically put it back together. Now the problem with doing the blocker plate is that the up pipe right here underneath, it's got like a kind of a, a flex part on it. And that accordion style part likes to blow out with the, all the back pressure there. So I'm gonna get rid of the down pipe and this up pipe. We're gonna cut this branch off and we're just gonna weld it to a solid up pipe and get rid of this EGR port altogether. Okay, so to get at this down pipe, we have to take this heat shield off the turbo. So there's three 10 millimeter bolts, they're easy to get at. But the problem is getting this cover off. It's uh, very tight in there. So what I do is I just take a little zip cut and I just cut it into two pieces. I just kind of cut along here, take this piece off and then you can usually fold this piece out after. If you want, you can try to take off some fuel lines and your glow plug controller and all that stuff and get out in one piece. But a lot of people say you don't even need to put this back on after. So you could probably just get rid of it. I'm still gonna cut it and put it back on in two pieces. But uh, yeah, that's just how I'm gonna do it. All right, I cut her, this is what I used. Now I should be able to take these bolts out and get that heat shield out of there. Okay, I got the heat shield off. Now there's a heat shield on the actual back of this down pipe. So there's three 10 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna try to take those bolts off and I'm gonna try to kind of slide this uh, heat shield up and then we'll take the down pipe out through the bottom. Okay, so I end up pulling this wheel off, getting this fender out. I usually do that just so you got more room. The exhaust on this truck, I'm putting a different exhaust on. 
Uh, it had a dual exhaust system, but it was falling apart. So I got a new single system for this truck. So right now I have the exhaust off. So if you don't do that, you'll have to just get this uh, down pipe out or the this first pipe out anyways. And then uh, I got two bolts out of three off this heat shield, but the one's kind of a pain to get at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bolt off. I'm gonna undo the V-band clamp up at the turbo. And then there's also back here, your tranny oil dipstick gets in the way. So there's two bolts, bell housing bolts with nuts on them. You gotta loosen those off just so that you can move that tranny dipstick up a little bit. So it's kind of a pain in the ass to get this all out, but uh, just keep fighting with it and it'll eventually come. Okay, so I kind of got the downpipe jammed down as far as I can. I'm gonna reach my hand up there and get that last heat shield bolt off. Then I'm gonna try to kind of pull that heat shield up out of the way and then this downpipe hopefully should come out. There we go, heat shield's out. I unplugged this uh, glow plug power cord there too. But uh, yeah, this is out. Now we should be able to get this the rest of the way out. Fairly easy, I don't know, I'll have to fight with it a little bit, but it should come not bad. Okay, I actually pulled it out over top of the frame. So there it is. Look at the comparison between the two. It's hilarious. Look how skinny the factory one is. So this is kind of how it was. See, there's one, two, three bolts that you take off. Uh, one of them is kind of a pain in the butt. I think it's this one. But uh, yeah, you get them off and you can get it out. But yeah, never put a factory downpipe back in. Always go aftermarket. They're bigger, but they go in way easier. So they're better for your truck and they're easier to install and take out if you ever got to pull it out again. Okay, now this is the scary part. We need to unbolt that up pipe from the exhaust manifold and from the turbo. And if you've watched my LML EGR delete video, you know that when I went to unbolt it from the turbo, I had a bolt snap and I had to pull the turbo and drill it out and tap it. So fingers crossed that doesn't happen on this one. So you have one, two, three bolts here that bolt the up pipe to the exhaust manifold. And then you have another kind of triangle configuration of bolts that uh, up there that go to the actual turbo. So I like to just get a big half inch ratchet or something up in here. And then I just kind of ratchet them up, uh, ratchet them loose and hopefully they come loose. I'm really hoping that I don't break a bolt on this one. It's not too common that you break bolts, but it is something that happens sometimes. So uh, yeah, just wish me luck and we'll get this uh, up pipe out. Okay, I got the first one out. Uh, mine is a 12.12 millimeter socket. I have seen them six point before, but uh, usually they're 12 point. Start going after the other two now. Two down, one more to go. So this is what I'm using. It is a half inch uh, ratchet, a pretty big one, but it seems to get the job done all right. Okay, bolt number three, they all came out nice, so that's good. Now we'll work at these three that go to the exhaust manifold. These ones are, uh, they can be a pain in the butt too, but at least you can get a torch and you can heat up these two uh, pretty easily if they are giving you grief. So just be careful when you're uh, pulling these off. They feel tight, so I'm just gonna heat them up a bit so they come out easier. Okay, that's always a good feeling when they actually all come like they're supposed to. So uh, there's the up pipe. So this part here that goes to your EGR cooler or used to go to your EGR cooler, this is where they like to blow out. That's why it's best to just get a new up pipe that doesn't have this on it. Or in this situation, uh, I'm just actually gonna cut this branch off kind of right there. And I'm going to use some of the metal from this and I'm gonna weld it solid. So I'm gonna cut this off and cap it with a welder. That's what I'm gonna do, and then this will be one solid piece, and then we can reinstall it onto the truck. Something just like that. Now I'm gonna buff up the edges all around it so that uh, the welder will weld nice on it. Okay, so I cut some metal off of this, shined her all up, and uh, I'm gonna put it on here. I'm gonna tack weld it there, heat it up with a torch, hit it with a hammer, kind of mold it around here, and I'm gonna weld it all the way up. Once it's welded, I'll throw some paint on it and just so it doesn't rust, and then they'll be ready to go back on the truck. Okay, 
All right, here is the finished product. Doesn't look super clean, but hey, it'll get the job done and it saves the guy a bunch of money because uh, these pipes are stupid expensive when you buy them in a kit. Okay, now we're gonna put this up pipe back on the truck. You can just reuse the gaskets and uh, as long as your bolts came out, you should be fine if they came out nice. If you notice that they kind of strip some of your threads off, then you might want to get a tap and tap the holes in the turbo or the exhaust manifold or both. And then uh, I'm always gonna use copper coat on the threads of these bolts when we put them back together, just so that if we ever have to take it apart again, it will come out nice and they won't seize up in there. All right, we got the up pipe back installed, and now we will go and install that down pipe. Okay, the new down pipe is in. Now, go back and try to push your dipstick back on the studs. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, yeah, put your dipstick back on. And then uh, put your heat shield back on if you're putting it on. Okay, the tranny dipstick is bolted back up and I got this turbo heat shield back on. Okay, so if you have a EGR delete like this one with the blocker plates, you can try to clean out those ports there a bit first and then put the blocker plates on. They're pretty easy. You might notice that uh, these two bolts are supposed to be longer. That's because this bracket here is actually gonna go on them like that or like that. I don't remember until it's in the truck, but then we're gonna put nuts underneath when this bracket's on just so it kind of secures this in place a little bit better. Okay, so again, it depends on the kit you got, but this kit here, we're putting this bracket on. So it's gonna go on these two holes here. You're gonna take this bolt out and then uh, there's actually this little spacer which goes on that one and then you take this bolt out and we're gonna put a bolt in and put that bolt back in and uh, this will be sitting in there like that. It gives you new bolts in the kit just because you can't wedge the factory one in there but yeah you got a bigger one to the left and a skinnier one to the right and then like I said that spacer goes right there just to keep level and you can tighten this guy down. All right so if you haven't yet take this hose clamp off and uh, try to kind of twist and get this coolant line off that we cut. And same with this one right here. I usually try to get that hose clamp off. Sometimes I just cut it off with a zip disc because it's the, the actual wings are underneath so it's very hard to get off. And then just use an X-Acto knife or something and just cut this uh, hose off. Okay, now get your new coolant line. And like I said, it's gonna come from right here and go back to the firewall there on that hose you cut. All right, now we can put that intake elbow in. Just before we put this in, grab this guy and clip it back into the holes, the slots around here, and that'll make your life easier when you go to install this because uh, then you can just grab this guy and slide it on and it'll just snap into place. All right, this is in. These are kind of fun to get, but if you use some stubby wrenches, you can get out all the nuts and bolts to get that bracket tight. But uh, now we're gonna get this uh, turbo intake horn in and that PCV piping in. It's kind of a pain in the butt as well. Everything usually is on Duramax. But yeah, that's gonna be pretty much the last thing. Then we'll just be doing up the electrical, getting your air intake back together and uh, put your coolant in. To help lining this up, it has this little kind of plastic tab here and it rests on this little bracket there. So you know that's the position that it will sit in the truck. Okay, this guy's in. This was a pain in the butt, but I got it in as well. It's bolted down and the clamp's on. Uh, I hooked all my wiring back up. It's all bolted up here and you know, all the way to the AC and the coolant level sensor, all that stuff is good. Now we're gonna put in this air intake. After we put in the air intake, we'll hook up the batteries and we'll put coolant in it. When you're putting the coolant in the truck, you can actually take this little screw out at the front of the thermostat housing and uh, it will bleed the air out and then as soon as you see coolants pop out of there then uh, just put the screw back in. All right, it's all back together. Just gotta slap the tire on and put that wheel well back in but I'm not gonna bother showing that to you. Anyways guys, that's it for the video. If you enjoyed it, please like and please subscribe because I put a ton of effort into these videos so that you guys don't have to pay someone like me to do this on your own truck and it just feels way better when you do your own work on your truck in my opinion anyways. But uh, yeah, if you got questions, ask in the comments or shoot me a message on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.